Viruses are nasty and icky and sneaky, and now it turns out they also might be alive. Anthony here for D News, and there are two things that are bound to get scientists into a knife fight. One is defining what life is, and the other is figuring out whether viruses fit into that definition. But a new study by Tufts University says that whatever life is, viruses are probably part of it. And that is because they are stealing it from us. So biologists go back and forth on what life is so much that at one point there were over 280 competing scientific definitions of life on record. That is a lot. There are some basic guidelines that everyone agrees on. You've probably heard them before. Life is made of one or more cells. It obtains and uses energy. It grows and develops. It reproduces. It responds and adapts to its environment. And viruses have sort of straddled the line between living and non-living for a while. At first we thought they were poison, and then we thought they were living things, and then in 1946, Wendell Stanley got a Nobel Prize in chemistry for showing that they don't have the equipment to metabolize stuff, which means they can't get and use energy. Viruses also don't have cells of their own. They're basically just these little packets of DNA or RNA that live inside of other cells and piggyback on those cells' ability to reproduce, to get themselves replicated. And that's why they're so hard to define. They sort of borrow some of the building blocks of life from us instead of filling the requirements themselves. But now, it looks like viruses don't just borrow those things from us. They steal them and integrate them, copy them and make them a permanent part of themselves. So the team from Tufts took a look at a type of virus that attacks bacteria, which is called a bacteriophage, or just a phage, if you're nasty. This particular phage attacks cholera bacteria, and surprisingly, the phage had stolen the immunity system from the bacteria. And as it replicated, all the new viruses had it too. It had just ganked cholera's whole immune system. And what's interesting is that the new strain became better at destroying cholera because they both have the same immune system. So this means that viruses could potentially be living things, assuming they've taken the right stuff from their hosts. Now that doesn't mean they have yet, they still don't fit exactly into the mold, but they're much closer than we thought. We talked a bit about how tricky it is to decide whether something is alive or intelligent before, when we talked about that slime mold that could solve mazes. And while it might seem like splitting hairs or too academic an argument to have, actually defining these things is important for a lot of reasons. You know, think about looking for life on Mars like we're doing right now. We have to know exactly what life is before we can really say whether we found it or not. So what do you think? If it steals the building blocks of life, does it become a living thing? And if so, how many things are we misclassifying right now? Let me know and subscribe for more D News.